Next, I wanted to delve a little bit into normalizing different sensations in the body. And this is based on a comment from last week um, or last month, a question about um, pelvic pain and leg pain. Uh, and I've part of my pain journey has been with pelvic pain, but also that was my um, my for about 14 years, my specialty, different types of pelvic and abdominal pain. So let's go into that a little bit. And this is also a effort to normalize different feelings in the body. So there's something called interoception. Interoception is how the nervous system senses, interprets, and integrates signals from within the body. So sometimes we have pain or sensations or we aren't doing anything, we're lying still, and there's a stirring, or there's a clenching, or there's some sort of movement. These are all ways that the body uh, transmits information from one place to the other. Sometimes this is uh, within the range of normal. For instance, whenever you need to go to the bathroom or if you um, have just eaten a big full meal, you'll feel distension, you'll feel a sense of fullness and, and constriction. And you'll notice as you start to digest or as you have a bowel movement or after you, you urinate, that tension relaxes and you're back to neutral. But also from working with different people with pain, a lot of times different emotions are associated with interoceptive signals as well. So one of the reasons why I wanna go over this is to normalize whenever you're just sitting there in your body, you can feel something different in your body. It doesn't mean that it's a sign that something bad has happened. It isn't meaning that something is getting worse. In fact, it could be, it could actually mean that your body is successfully regulating uh, signals inside your body. So I'll explain that a bit better. There are four types of interoceptive sensation that have been described in the literature, but there are many, many more than this. And I'm sure we could, you know, if we all went into our personal experiences with pain, we could come up with a, a, a huge list of sensations or feelings that we've had. But let's start from here. Uh, one of the ways that this has been described as is mass. So for instance, uh, if you have a heavy chest, if you feel your chest feels heavy versus I'm lighthearted. You can even, there are even ways that normal people talk about this, but for instance, even if you just had a heavy meal and your stomach feels very weighty, this is a way that mass is represented within your body. And as you can see, there's a spectrum here for each of these. There's also temperature. Sometimes pain may be hot and burning and stabbing. Sometimes there might be numbness or pins and needles that you would associate with like coolness. Sometimes it may even feel ice cold. And sometimes there might be just a, a range and it can change within the same person. There's also a sense of motion. Sometimes pain or other sensations stay in the same, same spot and they're highly localized and they never move. And sometimes they roam around in their body. Uh, sometimes they radiate from one place to the other really reliably, or sometimes you'll just almost notice a twinge traveling up your leg, for example. And this is all normal. Then there's a dimension called cohesiveness, which um, describes how dense or diffuse a sensation is. So a dense sensation might be, uh, for instance, if I took my finger against someone's back who has back pain and I pressed it really firmly against the back, that'd be a dense sensation where you pretty much feel it where the, the stimulus is being pushed versus a loose or diffuse sensation is much more common with visceral pain. So for example, um, a lot of the women on the call may 
uh, uh, women, for instance, for women, uh, menstrual pain is often diffuse, where even if it's coming from the uterus, it radiates outward. You almost feel like the entire abdomen is full with it. And some people, you know, on the call have mentioned gastrointestinal pain in the past too. That's another type of pain where it feels really diffuse, almost like a whole quadrant, like a section of your body is feeling this, this pain. So you don't even know where it's coming from. And that tends to be something very common in visceral pain conditions. So there's this, this has been outlined formally, but even just from personal experience into talking with other people with pain, there are so many other different types of uh, sensations that come with pain. Sometimes it feels like it's rushing up through the body. Sometimes it feels like it's just sort of um, working on a certain area and then just slowly working upward through the spine. All of this it can be both uncomfortable, it could be neutral, or it could be painful. Whenever people have pain, a lot of times, uh, because we're so focused on pain, it's very tempting to focus on, you know, any sensation as being a potential indicator of threat or something's gonna get worse, or maybe a flare is gonna start. And I want to address that because whenever pain, how can I restate this? Whenever you feel a sensation in your body that is anywhere between neutral and just to the edge of discomfort, that could actually be a sign that your body, your nervous system has successfully prevented pain from happening. It's called a sub threshold, sub pain threshold sensation. And um, there's an old literature about it in the pain physiology literature. So there is, this has been described before, but it's all the stuff that happens before pain actually occurs. So in a sense, whenever you feel something like that, it means that your body has actually prevented pain from occurring. It's a sign of success. So this is, this is a, a big reframe, maybe from what a lot of people are intuitively used to whenever it's like, oh no, there's something new, there's something happening, I need to watch this and see if it becomes pain. Instead, what I suggest whenever that happens is just paying attention to the sensation and saying, wow, that wasn't painful. It was different. It was new, or maybe it changed locations, but that means that my body actually just dampened, it softened whatever was happening and it protected me from pain. And that's a more accurate statement. Um, the other thing here is that a lot of times these ranges of sensations in the body are accompanied by emotions. Sometimes, so I want to also neutralize or normalize that a bit. Sometimes these emotions and pain, sort of the physical symptoms and the pain and the emotions come together. Sometimes it's sort of like, a, for instance, maybe during a flare, you might have a very reliable association between the intensity of the pain and the intensity of the motions, and then it fades once they passed. So that's possible. This could happen over the course of minutes, hours, or even days. That's all within the range of normal, depending on the intensity of the, the emotion that's coming up. Sometimes they sort of the sensations come up with a story, sometimes with a phrase or a a phrase, for instance, that you've heard in your life, you've heard someone say to you, or even a belief that you may have about yourself. So sometimes it's almost like there's a little narrator giving you um, an insight into what, what is coming up with this pain. And I think that it's, this is a good opportunity to sort of have compassion, sort of compassionately witness whatever that story is that's coming up. It doesn't mean it's, um, whenever we're working with emotions in this way, um, the emotions and even the stories don't need to be solved. They're in the past, they don't need to be solved. They just need to be witnessed and sort of loved as they are. So this is one of the opportunities where you can practice this sort of disengaged 
um, detachment where you're, you're watching these sensations come up through your body. You don't need to judge them. You don't need to be upset about them. And actually the less resistance you have, the more quickly they'll move through. And then there are sometimes random pain and sensations that just ebb and flow. And I always think of sensations as having an emotion attached. You don't need to know the story. It's just something that comes up. Maybe, you know, it feels sad or it just feels angry. Like, you know, maybe anger is often felt in the belly. Anxiety is often felt in the upper chest or throat. Like just, you just have a, a very vague sense of the type of emotion that's involved that can happen too. So all of this is totally natural. And this can happen many times in different ways as different types of emotional memories are coming up to be witnessed. You don't need to do anything about them. Um, and actually the more you practice just watching them come up in your body and being okay with them as they come and go, you'll notice, first of all, they always go. There aren't, there are rarely things that just stay, but if it does stay, it's staying for a reason. There's something that your nervous system is working on some pattern, releasing some pattern that is very resistant to change and it'll take as long as it needs to take. And in a sense, I feel like that's what a lot of trauma is. Trauma is just patterns being stored in the nervous system. And whenever you're unraveling a lot of those patterns at once, it takes a while. And your body isn't going to do it too quickly. It's going to do it at just the right pace for you. Sometimes it'll feel very strong, but it'll never be above your threshold for what you can handle because your body knows you. Your body knows how much you can take. 